Hello! Welcome to my channel, I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be reviewing WWE Raw, 8th of July 2019, which was my birthday! Happy birthday to me for yesterday, by the time this actually goes up. Uh, we kick off with a mixed tag match of Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins versus Selena Vega and Andrade Elmas. Uh, Becky first eliminates Selena with a disarmor. Lacey Evans is watching from the front row, and then... Becky beats up Lacey. Uh, and then Selena takes out Seth. And then Becky takes out Selena. And then Rollins with the uh, curb stomp for a three count. Um, after that, Baron and Lacey come out and lay out Lynch and Rollins. The match was okay. Two out of five. It was alright. Not the solidest start to Raw, to be honest. But, mm, alright. Then, we have Paul Hay... Well, we had a bit of a Lacey and Baron backstage talking about their relationship and losing titles. They care about each other, that's a liability. Meh. Not even going to rate it, it was terrible. Uh, then Paul Heyman is in the ring. He talks about Sunday, saying he knows the word extreme, especially when it comes to Philadelphia. And they got, obviously, EC dub chants. No shit. Uh, then he talks about that I'm giving you, not a prediction, but a spoiler that Seth Rollins are going to cash in against either Seth or Kofi at Extreme Rules. He said, I have not violated a spoiler since before WrestleMania 30. I've built my credibility enough to a lie. So I'm either giving you a heads up on a historic event or I'm screwing with Seth Rollins and Kofi Kingston. Uh, I'm the only one who knows the answer. Oh wait, there's one more person. The either future Universal or WWE Champion Brock Lesnar. It was a good promo. I'm going to give him that 7 out of 10. It was pretty entertaining. It was then announced that Braun Strowman and Bobby Lashley are going to go at it in a last man standing match Extreme Rules. Good announcement. We then see McIntyre and Shane McMahon... Uh, stopping a man throwing out trash and says I've heard you're the best trash man in the world you might be Roman's tag team partner because Shane gets to pick Roman's tag partner tonight uh, okay weird 4 out of 10 uh, then we go to 2 out of 3 falls match the Usos and Miz versus Elias and the Revival going to put this out in this juncture right now these two out of three fourth matches are becoming boring as hell stop this bullshit WWE first fall goes to Revival with a sign machine second fall goes to The Miz with a score crushing finale and then third fall uh, Usos just come in, super kick splash on Dawson for the three count the Usos and Miz win Overall, the match was mediocre as hell. Nothing really rememberable. 1.5 out of 5. It was not very good at all. We then see Drake Maverick's 24-7 um, title when his honeymoon in Orlando. And Renee's like, we live in Orlando. What are we doing? And then it's like, we're going to continue the honeymoon in Newark. Which then goes to Drake in storage containers. Renee yells at him about photos in the tar bar instead of him. He apologises and said, I'll give you the honeymoon you deserve. Um, and then she's like, "You will then we'll consummate the marriage if we go on a proper honeymoon. And he's like, yay, I'm going to consummate my marriage. And then everyone chases him because they hear him. Uh, you know what? Funny as hell. 8 out of 10. I love all the 24-7 uh, title stuff, to be honest. I'm a sucker for it. Then we see Shane and Drew talking to a beer vendor, giving him a chance to be Roman's tag team partner. Eh, no rating. Uh, then we go to Rey Mysterio coming down and said he's ready to compete now. I'm doing an open challenge. Bobby Lashley comes out. Uh, Rey gets... A couple of things of DDT hits a bit of the 619 caught by Lashley, flatliner. Lashley wins the match. Is going to get no rating because it was basically a squash match, but it made Lashley look all right, which is all right. Uh, and then Lashley uh, throws Ray around, and then 
uh, looks at the Tauntaun, picks up Ray, and then Ray is able to get to his feet as the referee talks sense to Lashley, and then then just slams Ray onto three referees. Then Corpora said, "Last week he was the only man standing, and you better believe uh, on Sunday I'm going to be the last man standing." Uh, overall, the actual little beatdown segment was all right, six out of ten. Uh, the match was nothing though. It was nice that they made Bobby look, look strong to go against Strowman because I'm hoping Strowman will just knock him the hell out and then we can build Strowman back up to being a monster. To be honest, because I'd prefer to have Strowman as a monster than Lashley. Then we see... Uh, the club in the back. Anderson... Oh, Kayla asked why did they attack Ricochet last week. AJ says he doesn't know anyone an explanation. Carl was asked for comment and he refuses, and so does Luke. Eh, no rating, not really much to say on that one. And then we go to No Way Jose versus Cesaro. Match starts, Cesaro with the uppercut, then connects with the series in the corner. Got red super lengths, giant swing into a shop shoe, but Jose taps it out. Made Cesaro look alright, but again, basically a glorified squash match. Not going to get a rating. Then we see the Street Profits and they do some random comedy stuff. It was alright, 5 out of 10. I can't really say much more than that because, to be honest, I've just not paid attention to half the stuff they keep saying because they're just saying random shit. WWE, this is not how you book a tag team. They should not be doing what they're doing. They are legitimately very good wrestlers. The Street Profits are your NXT Tag Team Champions. You should show them some goddamn respect. Not whatever the fuck they're doing. It's shit. I love the team. think they're really good wrestlers. But what they're doing with them right now is awful. Absolutely awful. Uh, then we see Mike and Maria Canellis. Um Maria... Is sitting on a couch. Mike walks in with flowers. He said, I'm sorry about what happened last week. He said, the news caught him off guard. He's excited about their second child. They took out how much they love each other. Maria's like, I love ice cream. Mike's, Mike says, I love ice cream. She's like, I, I like ice cream and pickles. And then he realises that she plays an order. Mike asks if she wants non-fat ice cream. Maria yells at Mike for calling her fat. And then Maria asks what kind of man taps out a woman. Don't know what this is meant to be doing for Mike Kanellis at all. The segment was meh. It's going to get a 3 out of 10. I just don't know what the hell they're doing with this shit. Uh, then we go to Bailey and Nikki Cross in separate rooms to discuss Beat the Clock Challenge. Nikki's like, I owe Alexa everything and doesn't know where she would be without Alexa. Bailey's like, she's using you. You're the reason she has a rematch. She's using you for extreme rules. And she said... I'm sick of you running down Alexa. You've been jealous of Alexa since day one. And then Michael interrupts and says, Bailey will be facing Sarah Logan and Nikki will be facing Dana Brooke. Bailey talk, uh, talks about how Sarah is part of the Riot Squad and uses the to win. Bailey said she's not afraid of chaos. She said that she's a SmackDown Women's Champion. She will win the and set the stipulation. Uh... God, Nikki says that she will win and set the stipulation. It was alright. 4 out of 10. Not Nothing special. Then we see our Truth and Carmelo looking for Drake Maverick. Truth says that he wants his baby back. He hopes Drake is feeding him, not showing her any scary movies. Drake runs up the hallway with all the people running past him. And then Truth and Carmelo run the other way for some reason. Funny, actually. 7 out of 10. Not as good as the uh, Drake Maverick with his wife stuff, but it was still entertaining enough. We then go to the Viking experience versus Colin and Dev and Devon Justin. Uh, Viking experience for the three count. Again, glorified squash match. Not going to get a rating. Good that the Viking experience are actually on the show. Uh, then we see Drake Maverick make his way to the ring. Um, the Vikings finish take care of Hawkins and Ryder Drake goes into the crowd Truth comes into the ring and then leaves ok not really going to get a rating for that one uh, we then go to Ricochet versus Luke Gallows uh, first off Ricochet has something to say Gallows gave him one of the biggest beatings of his life he'll face AJ on Sunday 
we know that he's not coming alone. He will have Carl Anson and AJ Styles. In the end, he will fight all three. AJ thanks Ricochet for man who he is. AJ has some advice. In WWE, we move pretty quickly, so it has Ricochet show that uh, slow down and appreciate the moment. Guys, is going to stomp a mud hole in you. While we talk about appreciating a moment, let's talk about last week. And they take a look at the video package. It was a right promo. Not really going to give much of a pre-match rating, but it was all right. Uh, then Ricochet with a roll-up for a three count. The match was meh. Uh, 1.75 out of 5 after the match AJ tells Ricochet you said you'll go all three through all, th- through all three of us so why not go through Carl Anson right now uh, unless you want man enough champ we then go to that match Ricochet with a 6 splash to win again 1.75 out of 5 nothing really special after the match AJ attacks Ricochet punches him they hit the magic killer AJ asks Carl and Luke to give him for the style clash of the turnbuckle. He says he's not, he just drops him and like, uh, I'm a good guy. I'm gonna leave a little bit left for you as long as you stay down. I want to be able to beat you on Sunday. They leave the re- ring. Ricochet gets back to his feet. AJ tells Luke and Carl to get back in the ring. They hold Ricochet for a pheno- phenomenal forearm. A really good post-match beatdown. That's gonna get a solid 6.5 out of. Uh, 10. Uh, we then see Renee and Drake in the back surviving the night. Our truth and the referee emerge from a case, and Kamala comes out of another one. We see Drake run away, followed by Truth, who wants his baby back. Bailey is randomly watching this. Uh, 7 out of 10, it was still entertaining. Then we see a janitor limping in the back, and Shane Drew said, We found our guy. Uh, they're in the locker room with him and say, do you want to make five grand? He said he will do anything for five grand. He says, what's your name? And he says, Gary. And they're like, okay, you're it. I can't wrestle. You just have to stand on the apron and do everything. We'll even get you a mask. Uh, okay, five out of ten. We then go to Bailey versus Sarah Logan. It took Becky uh, Bailey four minutes and 32 seconds to win with a sunset flip buckle bomb on Sarah Logan. It was an alright match, 2 out of 10. Then Nikki Cross versus Dana Brooke. Uh, Nikki with a spring, swinging their breaker for the win in like 2 minutes or so. Uh, 1.75 out of 5 for the match. Then Nikki gets Mike and says, I have something to tell you. My stipulation is going to be a 2 on 1 handicap match, and I'm going to help Alexa take your women's title. I'll give you some fun of uh, go. Give you some free advice. Go and find a friend of your own. You need someone loyal and honest as Alexa Bliss. Someone who really s- will slap some sense into you. Bailey then slaps um, Nikki belly to belly suplex. Uh, then she hits an elbow drop. It was all right. Uh, then Maria is still waiting for her ice cream and pickles. Mike brings it. Maria says that food will make me fat. Maria wants to know if if she was not pregnant, Mike would impregnate her, and he says, I would impregnate her right now if she wasn't pregnant. Maria tells Mike that she will not let Mike impregnate her again. She might he might not even be the father of this one. Um Okay. I don't know what you build is this gonna be who's the father story? Are we on Jerry Oh I can't say Jeremy Carr. Are we on Jerry Springer? Yeah, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't say Jeremy Carl anymore because that show got cancelled. May that person rest in peace. Uh, but yeah, just what the fuck? Seriously. I mean, it was fun enough, but I don't get what, who the hell this is meant to be benefiting at all. Big fat zero. Uh, we then go to our main event of the evening. I'm going to skip the Becky and. Oh. We have Becky and Seth talking about random shit. They walk out as champions. And then they walk away. Meh. 3 out of 10. Then the Street Profits do some random crap. Uh, 1 out of 10. It's just... Ugh, whatever. I don't like it. Stop doing it. 
then we have the main event. Drew McIntyre, Shinma versus Roman Reigns and Gary Garbutt. Uh We then have uh, Gary get a tag. Uh, Inziguri springboard clothesline hand spring round kick uh, plancher onto Drew goes on the apron hits the springboard crossbody and then hit, gets hit by a Claymore three count by Shane after the match uh, Gary takes off the match and we see it's actually Cedric Alexander and then Roman and Cedric are like yeah sound uh, okay it was alright um, the match was dog shit the match is going to get a 1 out of 5. But I like the surprise it was Cedric Alexander. That 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 made me happy. That was alright seeing Cedric actually get something to do. Overall, this Raw was quite crap. Generally, it was not a good Raw. It's going to get a very low Raw rating of 2 out of 10. If it wasn't for the Ricochet, AJ Styles stuff and the Bailey and Nikki stuff, which... I actually found quite entertaining. It would have probably got a one. <laughs> I can't defend this show. I can't say it was good. It was just a drab time. There wasn't really anything good that happened on this show. Pull your finger out of your goddamn ass, WWE, because this was shit. Absolutely drizzle shit, especially compared to last week. But anyway, I do hope you've enjoyed this review. Please smash that like button, share this all around, subscribe for more content, and I shall catch you later. Bye!